and welcome back to Nova Gnome Creations Grinch Applique Tutorial. This is going to be part two where we work on the face details. So if you need part one, it's linked in the description. So this video, we are going to be working on the face details and the materials that you're going to need are some black embroidery thread, or if you don't have any, you could use black yarn and just pull apart um, the plies a little bit. You're going to need a very little bit of yellow yarn. I'm using a worsted weight yellow and a 3.5 millimeter hook. You're also going to need some scissors and a yarn needle. And actually you could just use a regular needle for this if you wanted to. Um, it might actually be easier to use a regular needle, but I'm using a yarn needle. So uh, just a disclaimer, I am not like an, a pro embroidery person. Um, this is just how I do it. And it may not even be, you know, a technical correct way of doing it, but that's how I'm going to show you to do it. So first we're going to start with a magic circle. And if you need a slowed down version of how to do a magic circle, I will have that tutorial linked in the description. Um, but once you've got your magic circle, this is super simple for these eyes. We are literally just going to do four um, single crochets working into our magic circle. Make sure you work over that tail too. And just four single crochets. And we're not even going to um, slip stitch back to the first stitch or anything. We're just going to work those four single crochets in and we're going to pull our circle closed because we're not really forming a circle and then we're going to chain one just to give ourselves a nice little knot at the end make sure our yarn is secured and then you can go ahead and cut your yarn already that's literally it um, for crocheting uh, as far as this part of the tutorial goes you're just going to make two of those but make sure you give a nice solid tug on both of your tails, especially that magic circle tail. Um, and if you need to weave it in a few times, if you didn't feel it like really like snap into place and you're afraid it'll come out, you can weave it in a few times. Um, but go ahead and make two of those. And once you've got your second one uh, made, go ahead and get your yarn needle and thread your yarn through it. And we're just going to sew the eyes on. So for the eye placement, I tried to make them like a little bit angled because um, the Grinch's eyes are like a little bit angled, as you can see in this picture here. And so um, I tried to kind of sew them on um, a little bit angled. That was the picture I used as a reference for doing the Grinch's face. Um, but honestly, this is like really forgiving and... Uh, there's not really a wrong way to do any of this. Um, so if you decide to do it a little bit different, you want a different expression or whatever, that's totally fine. But like I said, just showing you, um, the way that I did mine in case you would like, um, to see how I did mine. So I just kind of picked where I wanted it, made sure I liked it there and started to sew it on. And basically, uh, I just sewed it on till the whole thing was nice and flat. If I needed to readjust the positioning at all while I was going, I would. Um, and it's really honestly that simple as far as this part goes. The reason that I'm sewing them on now instead of doing the embroidery on the eyes first, because it would be easier to push your needle through if you did the embroidery on the eyes first. Um, but I sewed mine on and then did the embroidery because I wanted to make sure that my pupils were where I wanted them. And I was afraid that if I put the pupils on before sewing the eyes on, that I might end up with like a really wonky, um, pupil placement if the eyes, you know, shift a little bit here and there while you're attaching them. Um, because right now, if they shift a little bit here and there, it's really not a big deal. But if there were pupils on there, it would be a bigger deal because that would totally, you know, if you have your pupils in totally different spots, it's going to make it look wonky and derpy. <laughs> but if you like, you know, would struggle really bad to push that needle through, um, two layers of yarn, you could totally do your embroidery, um, on the eyes first. Um, but that's just not how I did mine. So I'm showing you how I did mine. 
And I just kind of check it to make sure that it's sitting flush against that. Uh, and then once I'm happy with it, I went ahead and pulled my yarn needle out um, and went ahead and threaded the other tail that's up front. And am using it to kind of secure down the last corner, but also pulling it to the back side at the same time. And now I can just knot my two tails together and that will secure everything together nicely. Um, the back of your applique isn't going to show since it's an applique, you know, you're going to put the back up against a clothing item or a blanket or whatever it is you're using it for. Um, so you can really just totally wreck the back of it with your tails and your embroidery thread and everything because nobody's going to see it. So I just went ahead and gave it, you know, a good like three knots. Um, so I know it's nice and tight and snug and secure. And then I went ahead and cut my yarn. So go ahead and do the same thing for the other eye. And I will meet you back. And don't forget at any point during this, you can pause if you need to catch up um, and then continue on with me. So once you've got your second eye attached, we are on to putting in the embroidery thread. So uh, this is going to be kind of a long process. I am not super experienced with embroidery. I just kind of do it and do my best to make it look like what I want it to. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm going ahead and cutting a nice length of black and putting it on my needle. And then I grabbed a marker. It's a um, Sharpie pen actually. So it's very um, like fine tipped, but you could honestly just use a pen. I wouldn't really recommend using a normal marker, um, but like probably a pen would be fine. And you also don't have to do this step at all if you don't want to. But I did it on my first one and I found it really helpful on my first one. This time I probably didn't need to do it, but I went ahead and did it anyways just because when you do this, it'll be your first time doing it. And so you might find it useful too to have it there your first time. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing where I want those tops of the smiles to be because he has these like little curled edges to the tops of his smile um, on either side. And I wanted to make sure to kind of keep it as symmetrical as I could. I wanted to have where I want the smile to kind of end and begin um, marked because that's the part like when you're in the process of doing it, it's really easy to kind of mess up. So I just gave myself like a vague little shadow basically of where I wanted the end and the beginning to be. And then also just where I wanted the middle to be because he has like this little like split part that goes in the middle and like I said you can totally omit that if you don't want to write on or draw on your uh, yarn I totally understand um, but for this particular project I did so then I just went underneath from the back and popped up um, into the first corner of the mouth and I did that and left a nice little length of embroidery floss hanging out the back so that in the end I can just knot those together with other pieces and I can hold on to it right now to keep it from pulling through any further. So I'm going from the first corner to the second corner of that little curve of his smile, um, of the, of the, that, that side of his smile. And then I'm going up into the middle at the top of the curve. And then I'm going to take my embroidery floss and kind of go over my needle and then pull it up and it kind of shapes it into this nice, you know, like half circle. Just like that. And then I just tugged on my tail a little bit because I wanted to make sure it was nice and snug. And I go over all of my embroidery like several times um, for this particular project. Not for all projects, but for this particular one, I found like nice, thick, solid lines um, give me that look that I'm wanting more, um, which is also why I think that you could totally do this in yarn um, if you don't have embroidery floss, especially if, you know, you used a three weight yarn or if you used a four, you just separated a few plies out. Um, I think you could totally do it in yarn. I frequently embroider on um, crochet with yarn. <laughs> But I did get the floss out for this one. 
So once you're happy with your little um, corner smile, um, we can go ahead and move on to the smile um, itself. And I'm really happy with that. Like I said, I went over it a few times, but you know, you can, you can do it to your personal preference. So um, when I'm doing this, I just kind of try to poke up from the back. And if I pop up somewhere that I don't mean to pop up, then I just pull it back out and redo it. Um, like pull my needle back out. And it's super easy to just kind of poke at it until you get exactly where you want. Um, alternatively, you could just flip it over and like look, but you're not going to see the front and it looks very different from the back. So I just find that that doesn't really help. I would rather keep it facing forward and just kind of feel it out. So something that I like to do um, when I'm working with embroidering is I like to kind of double back over the embroidery floss. So I go forward and go back, go back down through the back. But then instead of just like popping up in the same spot, I double back and I try to pop up kind of in between the fibers of the embroidery floss because I feel like that's going to give a more solid line um, look so that, you know, you're not seeing segmented pieces of like embroidering because I work in small pieces because I want it to stay laying flat. If I worked in a really long piece, like, um, you know, the whole like half of the smile, then it wouldn't lay flat. So I work in small bits, but then I try to like double back and com come up through the embroidery threads kind of in between the pieces a little bit and I do the same thing if I'm working with yarn so if you are um, doing your details with yarn you can still pop back up and go through the fibers of the yarn and I just think it makes it a much more solid line it also makes it so that things line up better because you're kind of keeping the line of the part you just did with what you're currently doing if that makes sense so we're coming up on the middle now and in the middle of the Grinch's smile he has a pretty um like defined curl to his smile. So what I'm doing is popping up at the very bottom with my darning needle and pulling my embroidery thread up but then I am actually going to um use that same technique I used at the corner of the smile where I pop my needle back up and kind of catch the yarn that's already up there to shape it. So I went back to where my smile is from at that bottom where I want the curl to go. And then I popped back up in line with where my smile will continue. And then I'm kind of grabbing that yarn that's coming out or not yarn, sorry, embroidery thread that's coming out of the bottom where I want the curl to be. And then pulling it tight just to kind of give it that shape that I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to um, do the next part of following the smile line. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a minute to form the middle of the smile. So he's got this, you know, classical Grinchy smile, um, which is very curled and dramatic. And I wanted to try to capture that the best that I could with embroidering. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So I pop up close to where the nose is going to be, but not quite where the nose is going to be. And I'm making kind of a little line down. Working in pieces like I like I like to do and then I'm popping back up at the smile where my other um, little piece at the bottom comes up and then I'm just going to pull that up and go up towards the top. And there we go. And I'm just going to thicken the lines up a little bit after I poke around trying to find the spot I want to come out. <laughs> I 
I think the smile is the most important part of the embroidery for the face because the Grinch really does have this very iconic smile, this very like specifically Grinchy smile. So I spend a lot of time on the embroidery for the mouth trying to get it perfect. There we go. So once you're happy with uh, your middle, you don't have to go over it as many times as I am. I'm just trying to shape it, you know, um, give it as much detail as I can to look how I want it to look. But once you're happy with this part, you don't have to keep, you know, going back and forth. You can go ahead and move on to the rest of your smile. But here is what mine is looking like. And just to give you guys an idea of uh, what we're looking, like what we're working towards, here is it with the picture again. So you see that really iconic, like, curl that he has going on, this, like, shaping to his smile. So that's what I'm aiming for here. And now we can continue on just doing the exact same thing that we did on the right side, but now we're going to go ahead and do it on the left. So we're just going to pop up through and, you know, double back and kind of work our way around following the um, shape of the face. It's really easy to keep our smile um, shape because we're really just kind of following the same distance from the side of the face for most of it. Um, so it actually is like easier than you know a smile in the middle of the face would be like a normal face so we're just going to continue our way up and I'm going to speed this part up because uh, you don't need to watch me do the exact same thing I did in slow-mo on the other side for this side Okay, now we have made it back to the other uh, corner of our smile, and I'm just going to pop up on like the far left of this little curl, and then I'm going to go down through the other side of the little curl. But don't pull your yarn all the way tight, leave it bubbled up a little bit, and then go to the top of the middle of where you want the little curve to be and pop your needle back through. And then kind of catch that embroidery thread that you've already got up there over your needle and then pull through. And that gives you that little curve and then you can just go down through your applique right over top of that curve to kind of lock it into place. And I've got a lot of tails right now, so I'm making sure I'm careful not to uh, accidentally pull any of them up into what I'm doing. And then same as before, we are just going to um, thicken up our lines and make it look exactly how we want by kind of repeating what, we're, what we've been doing. So I'm going down into my smile and then up to that little point of the curve um, to fill in the little gap now. And I'm just going to thicken up my line a little bit for the curve of my smile or the curl of the corner of the smile, I guess.
All right, and once you're happy with your smile, we can go ahead and we can flip our work over and we can knot together these tails. So nice thing about the back not being visible. We really, like I said before, don't have to make it look pretty. Um, we don't need to weave anything in or anything like that. We can just knot them together. If your tails are really far apart from each other, I would recommend um, weaving it over so that it comes out on that other side. Just go through the back of the um, crochet stitches just so you don't see it on the front. Or follow along with your smile if you, um, you know, can't can't manage to do it where you don't see it through the front. Um, but I would recommend having your strings kind of close together before you tie them. Just so that they uh, stay nice and tight to the work. So now I'm going to do the nose. And I'm doing the nose um, a little differently than I did it last time. Because this time I started in the middle. And I, start, um, I used the magic circle um, like a hole kind of as part of my nose, but last time I started at the top of my nose and um, I'm kind of aiming for like a diamond shape, just like a small diamond shape, just because um, he has, you know, like a normal nose, but it's, I don't know how to embroider this small for detail like that. Um, I definitely am not capable of embroidering a nose that tiny. So um, I just aimed for like a little diamond shape. Um, but like I said, last time I started at the top, and did exactly what I'm doing right now. But this time I started at the uh, middle of the magic circle, which is kind of like the bottom point of the nose. So you could really do it either way, but just kind of aim for like a little bit of a triangle or not triangle, a little bit of a diamond shape. Mine comes out a little bit more triangular actually this time. <laughs> Cause his nose is somewhere between a triangle and a diamond. I mean, if you were simplifying it, obviously, because <laughs> this is what it looks like. See, it's like a normal nose shape, but I have no idea if it's even possible to make one that small. <laughs> Probably maybe with like a thread needle. <laughs> and now I'm just going to do the little embroidery in the eyes. Um, on my other one sitting here, I just did two little lines. Um, on this one, I'm going to try making more of um, a little circle kind of shape um, just to see how it turns out. And you can pick, you know, which one you like more if you like trying to make a little circle shape um, or if you prefer the two little lines. Basically, um, to make a little circle shape, I'm just kind of embroidering over and over in a like small area. Um, and there may be a technical way to do that, that it would look nicer, but... <laughs> This is just me experimenting. Sometimes if it's difficult to get through both layers of the crochet because it is thick, I'll go to the front and find where exactly where I'm hoping it'll pop up and then I'll poke my needle through the front and through and then I can go to the back and just kind of use that same hole that I just made. Um, because when you are pushing a little bit harder to get your way through the front or through the back, you don't want to have to pop up like 500 times trying to find the spot you're looking for. But yeah, so do the eyes however you would like your eyes to look. I'm just going to kind of embroider over and over in the same spot um, within like, you know, a little, a little range of a spot and make it kind of like a circle or an oval. Um, or if you prefer the way that it looks on my other one, you can just do two little lines. It's much more simple. You only pop up through twice. So however you would like to do it. And now that I finished my eyes, I need to um, get some new embroidery thread because I used up most of what I had. I just do kind of a long length of it and then when I need to um, replace it and add more, I add more. Because it's nice to have a nice long length so you don't have to do it a million times. But at the same time, you know, once you get to a certain point, the long length gets in your way. So <laughs> you can use uh, however long of a piece of embroidery floss that you would like to though. So now I'm moving on to the eyebrows 
and he has these really like bushy um rough looking eyebrows with a like, kind of spikiness to them so the first thing I do is sort of work around the shape of the eye just to kind of line the eye and then I start making little spikes off of that and I kind of did like three spikes um, one in, sort of in the middle, one sort of at the end, and then one um, a little bit more towards the beginning. So basically that's the general gist of how I do the eyebrows is just like line the eye, um, find where I want my little spikes to be, and then I just work on thickening it up and kind of shaping it a little bit more. And this is the thing that I would say is probably the second most important, in my opinion, for um, the face detailing. I think the mouth, like the smile, is really important for the Grinch. And I think the eyebrows are really important for the Grinch. Because those are two really, like, iconic, dramatized kind of um, expressive things about the Grinch's face. So taking a little bit more time on those to make them perfect, I think, is worth it. And I'm just forming my front spike. I got my middle spike right there. I've got my outline done. And then I want to form my back spike. And you could do as many as you want. Um, I just thought that three looked pretty good um, to get that, you know, kind of jagged, bushy eyebrow effect. And then I'm elongating my, my middle one because I didn't feel like it was long enough. <laughs> And once you've done that, we are finished. So we can go ahead and flip it over and tie some of those knots together or some of those uh, tails together. And same as before, uh, if they're close enough together, then you can just go ahead and give them a couple of knots. I like to do two or three. Um, but if they're far apart, I would recommend kind of uh, weaving them over through the back of your work um, so that they're a little bit closer together when you tie them. And just give them a few knots and then you can cut the embroidery threads. And boom, you are finished. You have your Grinchy little applique's face done. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, I felt like showing you guys how I did the embroidery for this was pretty important just because the face is very important and I felt like uh, the details really are what bring it home. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe.